Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today in our 21st Asian Impact webinar. My name is Kantuya, and I'm an external relations officer of the Asian Development Bank Mongolia Resident Mission. Before we start, I'd like to quickly check with the Mongolian participants on their access to the simultaneous translation. Webinar man үндсэн хэл нь англи хэл байгаа. Тэгэхээр та бүхэн Zoom application-ийнхаа interpretation тэснээсээ Монголын буюу Монгол хэлийг сонгож тохируулаад Монгол синхрон орчуулга сонсох боломжтой байгаа. За ингээд үндсэн хөтөлбөртэй орцгоё. Thank you for waiting. So today's webinar is particularly important for us because we are launching the bond market guide for Mongolia at this webinar. Since 2019, Mongolia has been participating actively in the ASEAN Plus 3 bond market forum as an observer, alongside the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN in short, Japan, the People's Republic of China, and the Republic of Korea. Mongolia's bond market guide was developed as part of ASEAN Plus 3 bond market guide series. ADB publishes this series to share the experience and knowledge gathered under the ASEAN Asian Bond Markets Initiative. Now, let me briefly introduce today's agenda. First, we're going to have a keynote speech by the Director General of Financial Policy Department of the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Mandur Nyamandelik. This will be followed by Mr. Satoru Yamadera's presentation on the importance of local currency bond market development. Mr. Yamadera is the principal financial sector specialist of the Asian Development Bank. And then we'll have a panel discussion by the chairwoman of Mongolian Association of Securities Dealers, Mrs. Ulti Bayerbald, head of financial markets and insurance division of the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Sonor Lusendorj, and a DB consultant who has worked on the Mongolia's bond market guide, Mr. Bilkum Dashtorch. The panel discussion will be moderated by a DB deputy country director for Mongolia and senior country economist, Declan Magi. Today's webinar will be closed with a question and answer session. So before inviting our keynote speaker, I would like to uh, note that this year is very important for us, all of us in ADB, as it marks the 30th anniversary of our partnership with Mongolia. This milestone is giving us an opportunity to look back at our partnership over the past three decades, to understand achievements, learn from experience, and provide some insights for our future engagement in Mongolia's sustainable and inclusive development. And we are planning to commemorate the anniversary through a series of events and activities that will engage all our key stakeholders in a forward-looking discussion. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome Mr. Mandul Nyamandilak, Director General of Financial Policy Department of the Ministry of Finance. Thank you very much. Dear distinguished guests, I'd like to start by extending my warm welcome to everyone joining us in the launch event of Bond Market Guide for Mongolia. I'd like to emphasize the importance of development of the financial market under the technical assistance and cooperation with our development partners. The Ministry of Finance has cooperated with the Asian Development Bank, along with many other partnering institutions in completing the Bond Market Guide of Mongolia. I must present my sincere appreciation to everyone who have contributed to the completion of this guide. The Asian Bond Markets Initiative is aimed to establishing common standards and good practice in the region, introducing cross-border transaction settlement infrastructures, and to promote regional standards. In order to achieve these objectives, they are sharing the international standards and good practices through ASEAN 3 Bond Market Forum, cross-border settlement infrastructure forum, promotion of the domestic bond market through Asian bond online website, designing country-specific bond market guide for its member countries, and providing financial services to its member countries through credit guarantee and investment facility. Through the Asian Bond Markets Initiative, our region has seen substantial developments in technological advancements and regulatory reforms towards international standards and good practices. Mongolia, following its plan to adopt international best practices, joined the ABMI as a non-member observer in May 2018 
We aim to share our expertise and experiences in developing the financial markets with our peer countries within the initiative to further develop and promote regional financial cooperation and to take part in spearheading technological developments. Capital market of Mongolia has experienced rapid growth in recent years with major developments in our regulatory framework, successful adoption of DVP2 T plus two principle, bringing international practices in our financial market infrastructure, introducing risk management principles and transparency, and paving the way to reduce our commercial fees and promote financial inclusion. We believe that the publication of the bond market guideline will be an important product for attracting foreign investors in our market and creating opportunities to grow and expand our enterprises and organizations, increasing long-term funding in our capital market that could help to protect the domestic economy from external shocks. Lastly, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the Asian Development Bank and their delegation for the continued cooperation to support and develop sustainable economic growth in Mongolia. We look forward to working together on future projects. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, DJ Mandos, for your keynote speech. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Satoru Yamadera, Principal Financial Sector Specialist of ADB, to present the importance of local currency bond market development. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gantuya. Uh, allow me to share my slide. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to explain the, uh, the remarkable recent developments of the Mongolian market. Well, uh, uh, this session, I just uh, briefly explained the uh, background of the developing bond market guide, also the, um, uh, some of the key highlights. Well, uh, first, uh, allow me to explain what bond market guide is. Uh, well, uh, this ASEAN Plus 3 Bond Market Guide series uh, is developed under the uh, Asian Bond Markets Initiative, we call ABMI, uh, to develop local currency uh, bond market. So uh, this ABMI uh, was initiated early 2000 after the uh, Asian financial crisis uh, because uh, the, uh, the governments of ASEAN Plus 3 identified uh, so-called double mismatch uh, is the cause of uh, the crisis. Double mismatch is a heavy reliance on USD in a short-term finance. So uh, Asian currency crisis was emphasized. I mean, there were some uh, sort of underlying problems, but uh, emphasized and also amplified due to heavy reliance of uh, short-term dollar funding. So to change the situation, the governments uh, propose to create the uh, uh, reverse the situation. So long term, I'm um, short term to long term USD finance to local currency, and that's why uh, they've been promoting the development of the local currency bond markets. This also has been recognized also uh, importance of local currency bond market has been recognized after the uh, global financial crisis and also the recent uh, COVID-19 shock uh, well realized us uh, to the importance of local currency bond market development because the country which has substantial local currency bond market can and also could uh, initiate various physical policy measures to cope with COVID-19 and they supported the uh, economies. So it is quite important, uh, the development of the local currency bond market, there's no doubt. And uh, we believe uh, this bond market guide is a kind of um, uh, key instruments to develop the market. Bond market guide is uh, one of uh, important our knowledge products under ABMI to support the local currency bond market development. And particularly, I'd like to emphasize the importance of ASEAN Plus 3 Bond Market Forum. Uh, this is a platform to bring public sector experts and private sector experts in this region to discuss various issues. And uh, eventually, uh, we'd like to connect 
uh, the region's uh, financial markets based on the standardization, also harmonization of the regulation or market practices to the extent possible. And the important point is Mongolia is the first non-ASEAN plus three offshore observer to ABMF. So uh, since the, um, their involvement in ABMF, uh, we've been uh, supporting, we've been sharing lots of information. And actually this bond market guide for Mongolia is one of our outputs supporting the Mongolia. Uh, the, this bond market guide is, I'd like to emphasize, this is the way to share the ABMI experience. So the information included in the bond market guide is of course important, but the process of developing this bond market guide was really uh, remarkable, I would say. Uh, thanks to the efforts of the Ministry of Finance of Mongolia, we could involve key stakeholders in the Mongolian market and we could form drafting committee. So that through the process of drafting, key stakeholders could expand their knowledge. They could learn what has been, uh, uh, what has happened uh, in ASEAN plus three markets. So uh, we utilize this drafting process as a kind of knowledge sharing. And uh, uh, also the bond market guide was utilized to identify the necessary building blocks. So uh, comparing with the other bond market guide, it is easy to uh, uh, identify what is still missing in uh, Mongolia. But I would like to emphasize through the process of local currency bond market development, there's no one size fits all approach. We need to customize uh, how to build the necessary building blocks. So this bond market guide is not just the information. Through the process of drafting, through the process of engagement of the key stakeholders, this paves the way to develop Mongolian bond market. So uh, let me move on to the uh, some of the contents uh, which uh, explained in the bond market guide. The first, the current state of the Mongolian market. And uh, uh, this table uh, shows uh, clearly the, uh, in the Mongolia, uh, the financial intermediation is heavily uh, uh, done by banks. Bank loan dominates financial intermediation. And as you can see, still the, uh, the securities issuance is just a fraction. Having said, I'd like to emphasize the recent developments of bond market in Mongolia, particularly the recent years. Uh, at this point, uh, we recognize a bond, a publicly offered bond and privately placed bond. Between 2015 to 2017, uh, particularly, we see uh, local currency government bond issuance. Uh, to the public, uh, particularly through the uh, Mongolian Stock Exchange. And uh, uh, due to uh, high coupon rate, uh, uh, this issue is uh, quite popular, particularly among individual investors. Uh, however, uh, Mon Ministry of Finance of Mongolia uh, temporarily seized local currency government bond issuance as a part of extended fund facility uh, EFF program uh, of IMF. So given this absence of local currency government bond issuance, local investors start investing in domestic corporate bonds, uh, particularly uh, privately placed uh, corporate debt instruments. So um, the recent years, we see some growth of bond markets in the domestic uh, Mongolian bond market. Uh, so uh, next, uh, some of the key building blocks. Well, uh, of course, uh, uh, there are, uh, I mean, the Mongolia is very early stage of the market development. So they may need to uh, establish uh, various uh, legal and also market practice legal framework, regulatory framework, but also the market practice. Uh, of basically, I would say, 
that Mongolia has some key market infrastructures. But probably uh, they need to emphasize the following two parts. The first, the, um, they need to create the properly regulated uh, private placement market or uh, exempted market. Exemption of public offering procedures to create a bond market, particularly uh, which is targeting to the professional investors so they can provide more flexible approach, flexible support to uh, various funding needs. Well, uh, currently, uh, there is no uh, difference between uh, equity IPO and debt securities offering to the public uh, under this uh, securities market law. Well, uh, this is some extent inevitable, uh, particularly early stage of the market development, uh, because often the case, not only in Mongolia, uh, but uh, in, in many emerging markets, uh, the public offering process for bonds and equities are very much similar. But uh, we need to understand the difference between equities and bonds. Uh, equities are based on the future prospect of issuing companies. So the price of equities is very much based on the future prospect and it shouldn't change much in a few days or a week or even a month because the prospect of uh, a company uh, is very much uh, dependent on the uh, future expectation of the corporate behavior. But on the other hand, debt bonds. Uh, price of bond is heavily uh, influenced by the various external market conditions, uh, exchange rate, interest rate movement, and suddenly the price of the bond can be changed the next day. So it is important uh, for bond issuer uh, uh, so they can uh, sort of accept the, the, all the uh, process uh, in a very short time manner. And in this regard, uh, it is desirable to have flexible issuance procedure. And also that is the reason often the case, uh, bonds, corporate bonds particularly, issued in a private placement because it's more flexible or sometimes like in Mongolia, it is unregulated. So we need to create uh, the market uh, with a flexibility, but proper regulation. Unregulated private placement market may create some uh, un, uh, sort of unwanted events. So the uh, investor may not be protected enough. So uh, this is a kind of the lessons uh, we can provide to Mongolia based on ASEAN plus three's experience. Another important point that we need to emphasize is the development of large institutional investor base in Mongolia. Currently, uh, domestic market, particularly uh, corporate bond market uh, investors are individual investors. Well, this is inevitable because as I said, uh, the market is very early stage of development. But uh, uh, through the process of the market development, we need to promote the establishment of large institutional investors like uh, pension funds and insurance companies. So uh, those large institutional investors should be able to provide long-term finance. Currently, uh, the reliance on the retail investors uh, made the market uh, made the issuance relatively short time period. So three to 18 months. So it is important to develop the large institutional investors. And uh, this is really the area the government need to work uh, hard uh, because establish, I mean, the creation of uh, 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 insurance business, also uh, providing the uh, social security through pension fund, these are important uh, government policy uh, measures. 
Having said, uh, there's a large bright side in the uh, uh, Mongolia market, and I'd like to emphasize the linkage with the international market. Through the process of drafting, I was very much impressed by the, uh, the willingness of stakeholders to be linked with international markets. Uh, so uh, from a global investor's point of view, Mongolia is quite uh, 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 attractive market uh, because high yield and uh, markets are uh, quite open to foreign investors. Because of that, uh, we see uh, growth of foreign investors participation in Mongolian market already. Still, uh, we need to invite more sort of institutional foreign investors into the market. And to do so, uh, Mongolia needs to uh, sort of uh, create good or better market practice, particularly uh, in relation to the uh, development of custodian also some uh, settlement procedure and information uh, disclosure as well. Uh, so uh, along with the uh, participation of foreign investors, we believe a Mongolian domestic market can be developed along with uh, the introduction of international practice. So that's one. Also, I'd like to uh, uh, highlight the recent ADB's effort. Uh, ADB has issued uh, to linked USD settled bond. Uh, so this is uh, kind of a unique product. So the uh, coupon is linked uh, to the um, uh, local currency, but uh, actual payment uh, will be done in USD. So this is local currency linked bond. And uh, uh, this actually paves the way uh, or creates the condition for the government to create a better local currency government bond market. As I mentioned, Mongolian domestic government bond uh, it has uh, sort of uh, uh, stopped. Uh, I mean, the government stopped the, the issuance uh, since 2017. And hopefully the, uh, the ADB's issuance uh, serves as a kind of a relevant benchmark. So um, the government can start the reissuance uh, easily and smoothly. And also with a careful selection of issuers, this may be the way to invite more foreign issuers, particularly who wants to do the business, who wants to invest in Mongolia. So uh, this may be the way to uh, consider. Uh, of course, as I said, uh, the market is very early stage, and so there are uh, some remaining challenges. Uh, first, as I said, uh, the market needs to develop uh, various good market practices along with the uh, uh, international practice. The first, uh, the clear definition of securities needs to be developed. Well, uh, this uh, sort of a legal uncertainty uh, may uh, create some difficulties because sometimes the, uh, it is not clear whether it's security or commercial bill or promissory note or uh, uh, whether that's uh, simply the reflection of a uh, loan. So it is important to have much clearer a definition of securities. And uh, uh, even for the private place bonds to attract the institutional investors, it is important to have a proper disclosure. Institutional investors need to follow uh, their internal investment guideline often requires continuous disclosure. So even for the privately placed bonds, it is necessary to have a proper disclosure and hopefully those information can be posted, uh, for example, like a stock exchange. Also proper investor protection will be introduced uh, with the introduction of um, uh, professional investors. So the flexibility in the market can be introduced while maintaining the uh, proper investors uh, protection. And uh, DVP is already introduced. So a uh, better custodian arrangement, also the market practice needs to be developed. And when a government start reissuing a bond, uh, probably uh, some of the realignment needs to be considered. 
Previously, bond were issued through uh, central bank or uh, stock exchange. To increase the liquidity and the better pricing, some of the consolidation of a government bond issuance channel needs to be discussed, I think. Well, uh, these challenges, I'm sure uh, those will be di uh, discussed and uh, necessary uh, regulation and legislation will be made through the uh, Sustainable Development Vision 2030, also the national program to uh, develop the financial markets. I believe uh, these will be uh, discussed in the uh, next uh, panel discussion, and hopefully uh, you can listen to uh, 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 sort of a, how the government, how the market uh, try to improve the, uh, 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 the market along with the uh, good uh, practice. And uh, hopefully ABMI also, uh, ADB can contribute to the uh, Mongolian bond market development. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Thomas-san. Now I'm going to pass over to Mr. Declan Magi, Deputy Country Director for Mongolia and Senior Country Economist. Over to you, Declan. Uh, thank you very much, Kantuya. Um, and I would also uh, like to extend a thank you to, um, uh, to DG Mandel for his uh, very, very excellent uh, opening remarks. And he talked a lot about the importance of common standards and good practices, the challenges that technological advances are bringing in, and also the huge developments that have happened um, in the Mongolian bond market in recent years. So lots of lots of stuff that we can jump into now in this next next part. And I'd also like to take a moment just to thank uh, my colleague Tomo um, uh, for his presentation, and he touched on again a lot of topics. Uh, that, that have relevance to what we're going to talk about next. And I will be trying to, to bring Tomo in uh, again later on um, as, as, we go in, as we go into this session now. Um, so we have, uh, we have a little less than 20 minutes for this to put some questions to our panelists before opening to the audience um, who can post questions through Zoom. And I can already see that some questions are coming up through Zoom, so that's great. So what I'd like to do uh, is I'd like to start with by going to Ms. Ulsibayer, who is the chair of the Mongolian Association of Securities Dealers. So Ms. Ulsibayer, what I wanted to ask you, and I suppose it builds on some of the points that the DG made in his remarks, but can you tell us a bit more about recent market developments in Mongolia from your perspective and what people, particularly people outside of Mongolia, as there are so many of them on this call, what, what people outside of Mongolia should know about it? Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for providing me an opportunity uh, to give you some recent, you know, um, uh, develop uh, the recent information updates you know, on the market development. So we have very positive developments on the capital market uh, now, like you know, because uh, of the several you know uh, government uh, decisions. For example, you know the uh, policy rate uh, in central bank policy rate was uh, decreased to six percent, and then uh, 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 related to that, uh, locally. Um, a local bank's deposit uh, interest rate uh, has also decreased. So this, you know, uh, brought a lot of uh, local investors into the capital market. You know, people start to look for a new, uh, like for other opportunities to invest, you know, uh, other than banks. So, you know, like in the first quarter of 2021, for example, you know, the top 20 index of Mongolian stock exchange, for example, increased almost 90%, like from uh, 19,000 two weeks to like 36 two weeks. So we see like a, a you know 90% increase of top 20 index, and market capitalization, for example, you know increased 20 more than 20% in the first quarter of 2020. So it's a huge how does a positive uh, development on the local. Uh, uh, market, you know, capital market. And um, also just now, like two weeks, uh, like literally two weeks ago, the biggest mining company, coal mining company, a state-owned company, Venice Tavan Kolgoy, you know, they also issued a public bond on the Mongolian Stock Exchange, raising uh, 677 billion two Greeks. 
uh, so which is the you know record number of, like you know hit the record number of uh, amount you know uh, raised through issuing a bond a corporate uh, bond so th the thing is one thing you know to pay attention is you know like like um, it was mentioned in the paper you know usually in you know, a local bonds even you know through private placement you know they they were issued like with the uh, maturity uh, a period of one year like from three months to one year, you know, but this time, you know, ETT, they issued a bond with the maturity period of two, from two to three years. So, you know, and we saw a big um, interest from local investors, you know, and, and we saw, um, we uh, noticed a big interest from local investors in subscribing in local, you know, currency bonds. Because ETT, you know, they've uh, issued two kinds of bonds, one in local currency, the other one in USD denominated bond. But we saw huge like interest, you know, bigger interest, you know, in uh, two Greek denominated bond rather than USD bonds. So which, you know, again, you know, shows us a big demand or a necessity, you know, to develop the local currency market bond. And one thing, as um, Mr. Uh, Satoru Yamada said, you know, uh, recently, you know, yes, we do really work closely, you know, with the government institutions like the Ministry of Foreign, uh, Ministry of Finance, um, uh, Financial Regulatory Commission of Mongolia, and we deeply, you know, appreciate uh, them, you know, for their intention and commitment, you know, in the development of um, local bond market, you know, because last year in December, Financial Regulatory Commission, they have approved an OTC regulation. So which is the huge, you know, step, you know, toward the development of local bond market. So they uh, authorized the association as, you know, to establish, to set up the local OTC market. So uh, now we've just um, finished drafting the relevant regulation, OTC regulation within the association. And we have already submitted the draft, you know, the drafts to the Financial Regulatory Commission. Once they, you know, give us um, their approval, you know, then we can start uh, uh, the OTC market right away. So you see, you know, we have, you know, like changes, you know, positive changes on the market. Thank you, Ms. Osibar. Well, you certainly uh, painted a picture of uh, a market in which there's a lot happening and a lot happening. Uh, yes, yes, definitely, well. definitely. It's a lot happening here. It's exactly. So it's certainly, it's certainly something that people need to keep an eye on and keep monitoring. So that's really, really, really helpful and a great way to jump into this conversation. So what I want to do now is I wanted to turn over to Mr. Sonar, who's the, who, who's the head of financial markets and insurance division in the Ministry of Finance. And uh, what I wanted to ask you, uh, Sonar, is, is could you tell us how the Mongolian government is trying to develop uh, the economy and the financial market? And why do you think the development of the bond market is important for Mongolia? Thank you, Declan. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today's uh, session. And I want to say thank you to Asian Development Bank and everyone who's participating. Well, I think... Uh, Mr. Yamadera has already pretty much summarized the importance of the uh, bond markets in general. So it is a very important channel, financial uh, instruments to provide long-term funding to the private sector institutions. So as we know, banks usually provide a shorter term uh, funding instruments uh, through loans, uh, usually up to one or two, th three years max. Now, in terms of the bond market and the capital market in general, it uh, helps the private sector institution to uh, raise much more long-term and mid-term funding through equities and bonds. Now, because there are many people here on this call who are from abroad, I just saw the participants list. Maybe I, I should give a very brief uh, historic background on the capital market developments. Uh, Mongolia has moved from the centrally planned economy in 1990 into the free market. And when that happened, uh, there was a starting point for the banking system because we've had a one central bank and certain parts of the central bank has moved, branched out into commercial banks, the big banks that we know today in Mongolia. Now for the capital market side, 
Usually in other countries, from what I see, from my research, uh, the bond market usually develops first and then there's equity market and it goes on. But for our country, uh, we started with the, because we moved from the uh, central plant economy, uh, we started with the privatization of so, uh, SOEs, state-owned enterprises. So in that sense, uh, the capital mar market development here started with the equities. So the first stage was really the privatization of state-owned enterprises. Now over the last 10 years, uh, the capital market has started developing in its classical sense with the uh, stock exchange trades and the, lately with the, a lot more bond issuances and IPOs. Now, in 2012, uh, our stock exchange has introduced an uh, uh, international platform from the London Stock Exchange. And in 2017, uh, Mr. Yamadera also uh, noted in his presentation uh, the government of Mongolia has uh, approved a national program to develop the financial market. So in that uh, program, it includes banking sector, insurance, capital markets, NBFIs. So it's a very comprehensive program. Now we've been taking action step by step since 2017, and the program is until 2025. So we're in 2021. Now the steps have been already made for example, we've already implemented the post-trade settlement system, the DVP or T plus two. So that was uh, implemented in 2020. We've worked on, on it in 2019, right after the establishment of the program. Now, furthermore, uh, this year, uh, from the Ministry of Finance, from the Financial Regulatory Commission and all of the uh, <clears throat> institutions together, we're working on the legislative reforms uh, to further enhance the market. So we're working on the securities market amend, uh, law amendments, amendment to the insurance law, uh, amendment to the investment fund law. So all of these laws, in a way, uh, Mr. Yamadera has uh, noted a number of things that needs to be developed in, in the market. Uh, these uh, legislations are really aimed to uh, answer, uh, to tackle some of those, a lot of those. For example, the private placement market for the uh, bond, mark, bond securities. For example, the creation of institutional investors and how we can further support them. And the, in terms of uh, implementing international standards, uh, for example, in our custodian banks, we already have uh, one uh, international custodian who's working uh, with one of our local custodians as well. So in that sense, uh, Ministry of Finance side and also the regulators, FRC and others, are work, working very closely together. And we have a roadmap and plan, and we are working uh, on, this, uh, uh, <clears throat> on this plan uh, going forward. So hopefully uh, it's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sona. That was, that was very, very helpful, and it was very good to get that kind of brief overview, not only of, of the initiatives going forward, but also that little bit of history and context. And I think that will be very, very helpful uh, for, our for our listeners. So I want to turn uh, now to Mr. Bilgun. So uh, Bilgun, you were closely involved in the development of the bond market guide itself. And so I wanted to ask you, can, can you tell us um, what are the lessons for Mongolia in this process? And how do you think Mongolia can follow the Asia, Asia bond markets initiative? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I think the, uh, throughout the bond market guide uh, drafting process, uh, it was a very useful exercise for the local market uh, in comparing itself with the rest of the region, uh, especially because uh, the bond market guide uh, follows the same format in all countries. Uh, the bond market guide from Mongolia has a similar format to bond market guide in Japan or China, for example. So it's, it's very easy to compare when you read it, uh, each chapter, chapter by chapter. So the, the biggest lesson we learned was how do we compare with other markets in the region? And uh, as a result of this comparison, uh, we were able to identify uh, what uh, uh, was different in Mongolia and what we needed to change or what uh, was missing in Mongolia that we needed to address, uh, which was quite useful. And, uh, and uh, I guess the next step is actually go and, and make these necessary changes uh, to, to keep in line with the, the global practices. So, um, 
so what we learned throughout this process is that Mongolia has all the necessary basic infrastructures uh, to develop a, and trade uh, local currency bonds. And uh, so we've, uh, throughout the drafting process, we've involved uh, all the stakeholders in the market, uh, including the regulators and all the uh, market players. And uh, we've had uh, uh, various discussions with, the, with all of them. And uh, the drafting committee actually um, uh, developed and sent uh, our, uh, you know, unofficial um, recommendations to the regulators. So I think uh, these uh, lessons learned from um, doing the process of, of drafting this bond market guide is already being impl implemented in the, in the coming regulatory changes, I think. Thank you, Pilgrim. That was uh, that was very helpful, and I really um I suppose you you made a, a really core point as well that Tomo mentioned in his presentation about the importance of that process uh, as as a mechanism to bring all these players together. So I think that was really good uh, good for you to highlight that. I, I want to go back again to Ms. Ulcibayer, um, and I know this is um a question in many ways that we we've, we've all touched on a little bit, or all of you have. But maybe, maybe to, to, to sort of uh, put it back to you uh, and, and give us a sense on where you're coming on this. But I want you to look forward and, and what do you see as the, the key challenges and opportunities for the bond market in Mongolia? Okay, many of us you know, mentioned in their speech about the lack of relevant uh, proper you know, um, legal regulation. So that will be, I think, you know, that will be the most, you know, challenging part, you know, in the future. And we need to introduce uh, a relevant uh, amendments in the uh, securities market law, for example, you know, to make clear distinct distinction, you know, between the IPO, you know, equity offering and bond offering, for example, you know, and um, then uh, uh, there, there is already a working group, you know, established by the. Uh, uh, finance minister order just recently. Yeah, it, it, like uh, we started you know, to work on the uh, amendments of the laws uh, of relevant laws starting from last year. But this year, you know, just recently, like, like two weeks or three weeks ago, you know, we have a new uh, renewed working group, and we have already started to work, you know, on the um, uh, on the drafting, you know, uh, of the amendments in the relevant laws and regulation. So, and we are planning, you know, to submit these drafts, you know, to the um, parliament's spring session. So we are working on that. That will be the big challenge you know, in the future. And then second one is um, um, capacity building, capacity building of uh, market participants. Some of us, you know, mentioned, you know, like uh, precisely like about custodian banks, us, for example, you know, I see the um, uh, importance of uh, uh, funding, you know, our local credit rating agents, agencies, for example, you know, because so far we don't have any, you know, credit rating agency operating in Mongolia right now. So, which makes it difficult, you know, to uh, issue bonds, for example, you know. And uh, so, and the third, uh, third thing will be, of of course, you know, the uh, OTC operation. Although, you know, we're trying our best, you know, to, yes, to draft our regulation, you know, and to keep up the market. But I think, you know, in order to introduce the um, international standards and good practices and implement the, uh, what mentioned, you know, in the bond market guideline, you know, developed by uh, ATB, for example, you know, we definitely need, you know, technical assistance, you know, from donor countries, you know, from uh, international communities. And uh, if uh, one thing, <laughs> if by any chance, you know, we would be, you know, implementing the extended fund, you know, facility, you know, program by uh, uh, IMF, for example, please tell your colleagues not to hold the local bond, government bond issue again, you know, because we worked very hard, you know, like from 2015 you know, to 2017, you know, 17 to develop our local market board, you know, we've worked so hard and it was, it was showing really good results, you know, but because of this, you know, uh, facility, extended fund facility program, you know, the government halted, you know, it's um, bond issue. So we definitely need government bond, you know, in order to promote, to develop, you know, the local bond market. So it was, it's, it is one of the, you know, 
important products on the market. Yeah, it, it it's the benchmark, you know, on the market. So we definitely need the government bond. And uh, uh, let me ask, you know, request the Minister of Finance, you know, let's, you know, build the integrated, you know, local bond market, you know. We need to, there's a small market. So the, why do we need like, you know, like many, you know, values, you know, for government bond trading, for local bond, you know, for OTC and Mongolian stock exchange. So, you know, we need to just, we need just to build one, you know, ecosystem bond market, very liquid. Where we can, you know, offer, you know, our all bond products, you know, to investors. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sibaya. and it's uh, it's it's good uh, uh, when you come up with very very specific things for 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 the participants in the call. So lot lots to think about. I, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give uh, Sonar a, a moment's break though on this, and I want to go back to Bill Goon because I wanted to touch on a point that. Um, uh, the DG made in his uh, opening opening remarks about the importance of regional initiatives uh, like this. And I suppose what I wanted to ask you is, um, how, how can a regional initiative like ABMI help Mongolia's uh, bond market initiative? Right. Um, yes. Uh, so I think that in order to develop any uh, local market, uh, especially the bond market, uh, it needs to attract more investors, uh, especially uh, foreign investors into the local market. Uh, so uh, what investors generally require is uh, the availability of, uh, of, of public information uh, regarding these bonds and also the ease of access to the local market. So I think the Asian bond market initiative um, in general can help uh, both of these areas uh, in this regard. Uh, so the, uh, I guess a, a little bit of background on the Asian Bond Market Initiative. It was launched in uh, 2002 um, after the Asian currency crisis. And it, it, it should basically, do, the goal is to achieve a re regional financial cooperation and integration. And uh, not only in regulatory issues, but also in, in, in market access and information. Uh, so uh, it's, well, by um, uh, integrating the whole Asian uh, bond market, uh, uh, so it's, it, it will be easier for, for example, for investors from Japan to buy and access, getting access to uh, corporate bonds issued in Mongolia, for example. So it's a great initiative to do, develop uh, uh, the bond market in Asia as a whole. So I think uh, Mongolia was uh, very lucky, I guess, to get involved with this uh, Asian bond market initiative uh, as, uh, you know, um, as an, uh, participating member, uh, hopefully in the future. Uh, so uh, this bond market guide is the first step in achieving that uh, process. And I think the next step would be to get uh, Mongolia's information on the Asian, bond, uh, Asian bonds online platform. It's a platform where all the uh, information regarding sovereign and corporate bonds in the region are, are placed. So it's a very useful information aggregator uh, for all things bond related in Asia, basically. So um, I hope we can achieve that next. And eventually I hope we can someday become, um, you know, member of the whole initiative. So it becomes like Asian uh, plus three instead of, uh, it becomes Asian plus four instead of Asian plus three. Uh, thank you, Bill Goon. Um, and I'm very, uh, very conscious by the way that there are a lot of questions coming in um, uh, on the Q and A. So what I what I'd like to do on uh, what I'd like to do, Sona, is I do have um, a question I want to, to put to you, which is is a, a sort of a challenge back to ADB. But I also maybe uh, just to line up the questions uh, afterwards is uh, Ulsi Bayer, There's some there's a question there on the FRC and some uh, draft legislation uh, there. You might not be able to answer the question on the legislation, but I think there's an important point on the FRC. And so I might ask you, Ms. Olsibai, to come in later on the FRC. And Bill Goon, there's a question on, okay. on, on um, uh, new product development that I was hoping I could get you to, to maybe come in on later. But before doing that, Sona, I wanted to give the kind of last question of the moderated panel um, uh, to you. Um, and um, I just wanted to ask you what role you think institutions like ADB uh, should be playing to support further market development in Mongolia. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Since we're, you've asked about ADB, um, uh, very happy. Congratulations on the 30 year anniversary since the uh, Mongolia joined in 1991. Um, to be honest, ADB has been uh, very helpful in the, in, in the past. Uh, overall, uh, providing the technical assistance, the uh, funding sources, and the policy guidance on uh, all aspects of the financial market. I, I understand that you're also working together on banking sector reform, for example. Uh, just recently, uh, the banking law was amended to so that uh, all of the banks now uh, in Mongolia needs to be public to, publicly traded companies by the first half of 2022. So that is also one of the uh, push by the uh, policymakers to uh, further develop, uh, to activate the capital market itself. And uh, so uh, we hope to further engage on this, uh, on the capital market side, on the, especially now uh, on the FinTech, the new, uh, <clears throat> uh, new technology, and uh, really to further enhance the current legislative and regulatory frameworks. Also, we've uh, in the presentation itself, there was a slide noting the uh, ADB has funded a private sector company through a, uh, a local currency linked bond issuance. So I remember we've started this uh, uh, dialogue a few years ago, and I was very happy to see it come to fruition. And I hope that a, these types of activities geared towards the private sector by the Asian Development Bank could be even further enhanced. And maybe at some point when uh, the local bond market is developed and it's transparent and maybe ADB can become an issuer or an investor in the local market. So I hope that happens. And I think uh, I'm cognizant of time. So I think it's better to answer the questions from the participants itself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sona. And I, um, yeah, I, uh, uh, lot, lots to think about there. And I fully agree. There's a lot of very, very, um, uh, good, uh, good comments coming through and questions. And I'm hoping I can come back to you. There was one there about um, competition with, with foreign banks. I was wondering if I could come back to you on that one as well. Before I hand over to Ms. Ulsibai, I just wanted to pause to see if uh, Tomo wanted to, uh, to pop in and add anything at this stage. Tomo, you, you're conscious of how tight we are on time. So if you can be super brief, I know you, you could say a huge amount, but I'm going to keep try and try and keep you very short if that's okay. And my point is, well, actually every panel, all panelists already mentioned, uh, so not much to add, but uh, uh, the point I would like to highlight is, Mongolian government is really, really willing to change uh, things. And uh, this sort of uh, determination is really the key. This kind of a commitment uh, from the regulators, government, uh, I would say this is remarkable. And uh, uh, this is really the, the driver to change the market. And I hope that the, uh, through this webinar, I hope the audience could feel this uh, some sort of uh, commitment by the government. Just that's, that's what I want to highlight. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I think that's a really important point. So I want to bring in uh, Ms. Ulsibaya so that we at least touch on some of the Q&A uh, questions because there's so many coming in. We won't be able to address all of them, but I hope that's a sign that this is a conversation that will keep going on. So uh, Batman Flatbold uh, asked a question about uh, the FRC, particularly on the corporate bond registration regulation. I'm not sure if that's something you can talk about, Elsie or if you want to make a general point about the, the FRC. Uh, yes, uh, it, you know, the drafting of the uh, bond, corporate bond regulation is uh, on the website, uh, on the uh, Financial Regulatory Commission website. And uh, as I mentioned before, you know, we work very closely with the FRC, you know, and, you know, uh, we have submitted our opinions and suggestions, you know, towards the draft, you know, of, uh, towards this uh, regulation draft. So, and uh, I hope, you know, we, uh, we, we, we can work on this, you know. Yes, and uh, uh, they've already, you know, like um, uh, put, you know, our suggestions in the regulations. So I think it's fine. So it's, uh, but the thing is, you know, again, you know, because the law, the main paper, you know, the law, you know, 
has no clear distinction, you know, between, as I said, you know, equity offering, bond offering, you know, again, you know, this, you know, uh, time regulation, you know, is trying to avoid, you know, some, uh, you know, articles of the, uh, you know, main law, you know, of securities market. But once, you know, as I said before, uh, once we uh, introduce, you know, the relevant amendments, you know, in the securities market law, I guess, you know, the bond uh, regulation will be uh, different. You know, we will again, you know, draft a uh, new bond regulation. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ulzibaya. Uh, that was a very, very useful answer. Thank you. Um, so, Bill Goon, I want to bring you back in, and there's another question in there about uh, the, the potential of uh, local market stakeholders to roll out new types of products and what these new products could be. So I wondered if you could take that before I give the, the last uh, say uh, back to Sonar on, on the question on uh, uh, um, competition. Yeah, so one of the major developments uh, recently in the market was uh, the FRC giving uh, the regulatory rights, I guess, uh, of the OTC uh, uh, corporate bond market to the, the Brokers Association, I think last year. And uh, previously, it, the, the, the regulator, the FRC, um, Financial, uh, Financial Regulatory Commission, uh, was basically the center point for all things, uh, you know, market related and, and regulating the market. But uh, handing off some parts of this, uh, you know, responsibility over to the Brokers Association, the professional association, is a very good step towards in developing the market, especially when, when the market uh, becomes really developed and becomes more active. Uh, it, it, uh, the regulatory, the re regulators might become, you know, overwhelmed <laughs> with so much issuance requests, you know. Uh, so uh, handing off this responsibility was a very good step in direction, in a good direction. And I think uh, in the future, uh, more and more uh, involvement with uh, with the, you know, self-regulatory organizations such as the uh, uh, the Brokers Association is very positive towards developing new pro types of products. Uh, uh, currently, uh, you know. Uh, as Mr. Sonor said, like you know, fintechs and you know uh, cryptocurrencies are pretty popular uh, among retail investors. So it could help in, in developing regulation uh, and also regulating these uh, new and upcoming markets. Uh, so yeah, it, it's basically anything is possible at this point. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Bill Goon. So what I what I wanted to do then is I want to give the last word of the panel to to Sonar. Um, from the Ministry of Finance. Um, and Sonar, if you could touch on the question asked by Matthias on, you know, his question is in order to further develop the local bond markets, would it help to further open the banking sector to foreign competition? But I also wanted just to give you a chance to make any final thoughts or, or remarks you have but before we close. Sure. Thanks, Declan. Uh, maybe I can also just briefly answer some other questions. The uh, well, it does make sense to open the banking sector. Of course, there, if there's more competition, it's better for the local currency bond markets. In the, currently, we uh, do not have any uh, foreign banking branches in Mongolia, but we do have representative offices of foreign banks from, uh, there used to be from the uh, Europe, now from the Japan and China. Now, when the government used to issue the uh, government bonds in the local markets, uh, some of these banks actually used to participate in the auctions. Now they were more of a intermediary back then. So they've intermediated through synthetic products, uh, getting funding from the international investors and invested in the local bond market. So it really helped the, uh, <clears throat> to drive the supply and the uh, competition. So it does make sense. And we have the previous uh, experience on that. Uh, and I think I saw one interesting questions regarding the ESGs as well. Um, we are looking into it. Uh, so these are environmental, social and sustainability type of bonds. So these are more thematic bonds uh, where currently the world is, if you look at the financial markets, the capital market, everything is moving towards more sustainable green investments. So we are looking into that from the government side. We are uh, uh, doing certain uh, research on this and see what we can uh, do to further attract investment specifically in the ESG area. Now, just as a final word, I would like to 
uh, say thank you all for participating. I know we are we're exactly on time. And I want to mention that the bond market guide itself is being translated into Mongolian and the translation into Mongolian for our Mongolian audience, it should be available in a near future. So hopefully you all get it and read it. So thank you very much and have a good day. Uh, thank you very much, Sonar. And look, I want to, to say, look, it was a great session with lots of food for thought and uh, hopefully it's 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 stirred a lot of um stirred a lot of interest and I think the questions are a good indication of that. I, I actually wanted just to say one thing. I thought what Tomo said in his uh, remarks when he came back in are, are very important. I, I think it's all clear the efforts that the government of Mongolia have been making. And you know what Ulsi Bayer said, you know, pay attention, there's a lot happening. And what Bilgun said about the basic infrastructure being in place is one of the core findings they found. There's a lot in, in, in those, 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 those bits and pieces as they come together. So I really hope this encourages people to look further into Mongolia. Um, but on that, I'd like to thank Mr. Mandel, and uh, Mr. Yamadera, Ms. Ultibayer, Mr. Sonar, Mr. Bilgun, and of course, Gantuya uh, Gonzorik, uh, our host, for making this an excellent session. And I'd like to finally thank the Asian Impact team and encourage everybody to register for the next Asian Impact uh, event, which is scheduled for next Wednesday. And it covers the launch of ADB's Asian Development Outlook, which is our signature economic publication. It's going to be an excellent session and it'll be hosted by our chief economist, um, as you can see there, Yasuyuki Sawada. So thank you all very, very much and have a great afternoon.